Hello, dear viewers, and welcome back to Saving Often. This is part two of Space Quest Three: The Pirates of Pestilon. In the first part, we woke up aboard a garbage freighter and had to find our way out, and we accomplished that by commandeering a ship called the Aluminum Mallard. It was missing a... Uh, it was missing a battery of sorts and also a warp drive, but we managed to find those things and take off in the ship and head out into the vast reaches of space, where we find ourselves now on the stormy purple desert planets of Fleabutts. Um, we quickly learned that there is a totally not a Terminator after us, named Arnoid the Annihilator, uh, and he is after us because back in Space Quest II, we procured a Labion Terror whistle from a company called the Jipazoid Novelty Company, uh, but apparently we were supposed to pay for that whistle, and we did not, so they sent Arnoid after us to collect the money that we owe. Um... At the end of part one, uh, I showed that there are two ways that you can deal with Arnoid. You can either lead him up to the top of that giant robot you see there in the background and get him stuck between some gears, which destroys him, or you can have him get eaten by a pod creature, uh, which is native to this planet of Fleabot. But uh, the problem is that when you get him eaten by the pod, you cannot retrieve the loot that's on his body um, because the pod simply eats poor Roger up. So that's a pickle because that is the way that you get the most points, which tells me that that is the solution that the designers intended you to do. So even though I killed him via the gears at the end of my last part, I have restored a save game to before we ever met Arnoid here on the surface of the planet. Um, and I intend to go through and do this the right way. So in order to do that, we need to go back to our good friend at the World of Wonders, Fester Blatz. Now, as you'll recall, we have no Buckazoids. We could not even play a game of Astro Chicken at the local Monolith Burger. However, we do have this glowing gem. What is left over from the glowing gem that was, uh, that we found on the planets of Labion, which helped us to get through the maze of caves. So, we can actually sell this gem to Fester. My, my, that certainly is one fine hunk of Orium. I'll take it off your hands for 350 buckazoids. What do you say? You know, I don't think 350 is enough. I'll take it off your hands for 400 buckazoids. What do you say? Nah, still not enough. I'll take it off your hands for 425 buckazoids. What do you say? I'm gonna take that offer, because if I don't take that offer, he will offer me next to nothing uh, from here on out. And quite honestly, I've pressed my luck enough, and I want the 425. So, we now have Buckazoids. 425 of these nifty monetary units known as Buckazoids. So let's see, he's selling an Orat on a stick. He's selling the official Astro Chicken Flight Hat. And he's selling Thermo Weave Underwear. Now I want all of those things. So let's buy the Orat. And let's buy the hat. And hell. Let's buy the underwear. There we go. Thanks for stopping by. Hey, looks like that lightning is getting close. Better be careful out there. And there is Arnoid the Annihilator. He wants 400,000 Buckazoids. We have 425, or did until we bought that stuff, so we have less than that now. Um, not quite enough to pay back our debts, but lucky for us, 
he's going to count to 10 real slow and then track us down. Let's take his word for it. It also occurred to me that I never tried to make it back to my ship. And I'm positive that you can't. But just for fun, let's try. Yeah, there he is. And no, I totally did not jump when he grabbed me. I don't think I'm very convincing, though. Okay, so there we see his footprint. And he is coming after us. So let's get up here. And take cover behind these pods. And watch as Arnoid gets devoured. The Terminator is now a pile of junk lying on the sand under the pustules. Looking closely, you notice that the Terminator's invisibility belt has survived relatively intact. So, let's save as... Pustules. And yes, if I tried to take it... Well, so right there I just got... Eaten. But yes, if I try to take the belt, I have to get closer. So, lucky for us, I have this Orat on a stick. You can open his mouth and close his mouth. Hours of fun for all. Take belt with Orat. No, 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 no. Just don't get eaten. No, I said don't get eaten. Okay. The goal is to not get eaten. Take belt with Orat. Try approaching from a slightly different angle. What does it mean? At least I'm pretty sure this is the solution. There we go. All right, we now have an invisibility belt, but look out, it's low on power. We also have the official Astro Chicken flight hat. Man, the babes will really dig you in this. And Thermoweave underwear. Thermoweave shorts, they keep you cool and they're oh so stylish. Okay, and with that, I believe that we are done here on Fleabutt. Okay, sit in cockpit and look at screen. Start our engines. And take off. So let's see. We've been to Flea Butt. I think we're done there now. Let's head back to Monolith Burger, shall we? I am famished. All right. 
Let's come over here and talk to this alien dork. Welcome to Monolith Burger. May I take your order? Hmm, order food. Choose a number to order. I know what I have to order, but I wonder if I can order anything else. Space Buds. Would you like something to drink with that? <laughs> yes or yes? Uh, yes. Would you like some Space Buds with that? Well, considering how I ordered Space Buds, um, <laughs> I guess yes. Would you like a Blat Fruit Pie with that? Oh, special today. A free drink with every purchase. Your total is one buckazoid. Hey. Have a nice day. You gingerly pick up the greasy bag. You can hardly wait to have a seat and dig in. a lot of eating for some space buds. Mmm, that was mighty tasty. Well, maybe mildly tasty. Well, maybe not tasty at all. In fact, it reminded you of the slick skin of a Vorlian mucus worm. Hmm, can I take my trash? Nah, let Mr. Employee of the Week clean it up. Fair enough. I'm going back for seconds. Welcome to Monolith Burger. May I take your order? Yes, you may. Order food. I actually want a monolith fun meal, so I will press number seven. I do want something to drink. I do want space buds, and I do want pie. Pay for my food. All right. Let's sit down with our monolith fun meal. Ow! Hey, what's this in my burger? Oh, it must be my fun meal prize. Hey, it's a swell decoder ring. Uh, once again, the slick skin of a Vorlian mucus worm. All right, well, let's look at that ring. With this ring, you can decode any secret message. Well, almost any secret message. We are going to save his monolith burger. And now I'm going to get to try my hand at Astro Chicken. Oh, and okay. Um. <laughs> Apparently, absolute shit at Astro Chicken. <laughs> Maybe I should wait for the instructions. Uh, okay, left arrow, move left, down arrow, stop, left, right, right, move right, up arrow, toggle, flapping. Ah, okay. Don't use up all your feed. Um, okay. Let's try that again. <laughs> Oh, I see. Oh, wow, this is really tough. God, I remember a... Hmm, there was somebody who many, many years ago made a bunch of uh, click-and-play games um, modeled after Scumsoft properties, and I think this was one of them. Wow, this is not as easy <laughs> as it should be, but I guess that's what you get for playing an arcade game. God, I know I mention my dad a lot on saving often here, but 
I, I can only imagine the hell that he went through trying to do this. Notoriously despised arcade sequences. Oh. Well. That looks like a secret message. Oh my god, are you going to make me actually do this by hand? You're going to make me do this by hand. The message reads, Help us! We are being held captive by Scumsoft and the small moon of Pestilon. An impenetrable force field surrounds the moon. It must first be deactivated. Its origin is unknown to us. Scumsoft security is armed with jello pistols. We are counting on you, whoever you are. Signed by Two Guys in Trouble. Well, that certainly is a hidden message. So now we know our goal. We are, uh, apparently trying to help the two guys in trouble on the moon of Pestilon. Well... We do need to go to Ortega, and we do now have Thermoweave underwear. I don't suppose that we can find the planet Pestilon. We cannot. So, Ortega it is. Let's start by wearing the underwear. After figuring out which side is the front, you put on the Thermoweave underwear. They power up automatically, keeping you comfy at all temperatures. My, my, this is one hot planet. But you don't care, you're beating the heat with Thermoweave underwear. Let's save our game. So now we can safely traverse the planet of Ortega. A very dangerous place indeed. The planet Ortega is truly a lava lover's paradise. Volcanic activity constantly reshapes its surface, so if you have any maps older than last week, throw them out. Hmm. Same thing. Um, can I jump over there? Not now. I probably can't walk over there. Oh, I can walk up. Yeah, no walking over there. And I can also fall to my death and boil alive. God, I hate this death screen. You never did care for fondue. Next time, don't get so close to the edge. Okay, get that off of my screen. Jesus, it still scares the crap out of me, even as an adult. It 
It appears that parts of this planet's surface are not entirely stable. Better be careful or you'll end up in that lava fondue below. Oh, well. Look at men. Obviously loyal company men, the Scumsoft employees are happily performing their duties, but looking at their weapons, you probably don't want to get too close. I know what I do want to save. Uh, let's save as men with jello pistols. And let's see what happens. Way to go, Ace. You blundered your way to within range of the pirate's jello gun. You suffocate in an impenetrable block of jello. As your life sputters to a close, you decide to cut down on desserts. Hmm. It's a speedy little short-range skull fighter, fully armed with the latest in offensive weaponry. You probably wouldn't want to tangle with one of these babies. Can't seem to get to it, though. Hmm. And I don't think I can climb the rocks. The sharp edges of the cooled lava would slice you to ribbons. You decide against it. Look at equipment. There's a telescope, an anemometer on a pole, some seismic equipment, and a crate of some sort. What if we wear the belt and turn the belt on? Looking at the belt, you notice the power supply is very low. You decide to hold off until you really need it. Hmm, so apparently I don't need it yet to sneak past these fools. But I'd love to get rid of them. I can't wear the Astro Chicken hat. Damn. Hmm. Now what else can I do here? I don't think that I can go... Nope, nothing down there. That's just Jello. Oh, can I... Can I sneak in here somehow? No? Oh. You hear the roar of the pirate scout ship taking off. The ship streaks across the sky to an unknown destination. Huh, so eventually they just go away. Well, let's look at this equipment again. Uh, let's take... Anemometer? It's not quite within reach. How about over here? It's attached firmly to the pole, it won't budge. Okay, let's look at crate. It's full of thermal detonators. Ooh, take a detonator. You pick up one of the detonators. Be careful, you could blow your fingers off with that thing. Can I take the pole? It's all yours. Oh, right. Great. Look at pole. A handy metal pole. Hmm. Can I take the equipment? No. Can I take the telescope? Nah, it wouldn't do you any good. Look in telescope. You need to get real close and look in the little hole first.
That's the moon, all right. It's known around these parts as Pestilon. Aha! You've discovered the force beam generator, and that moon must be Pestilon. Hmm. The force beam forms a protective energy shield around the moon. You reach the rim of the decayed cinder cone and are overwhelmed by the sight. An impressive machine of staggering size sits in the middle of the volcanic crater. Hmm, look at machine. It's pointing to a small moon high in the Ortegian sky. Pulsating circular energy fields are being emitted into space toward the moon. You are on a platform on the rim of the volcanic crater. A stairway leads down to the base of the massive force field generator. We're gonna save our game. You stand at the massive base of a force beam generator. This unit can generate a force field powerful enough to encircle a small moon. In the hole, you can't quite see over the edge from here. Cautiously, you peer down into the generator. It's too dark to make out anything, but the drone of the generator tells you that something is definitely happening. Well, I've never ever seen a spot more, more, um, appropriate for a thermal detonator. The explosion disables the force field generator. You may now travel safely to Pestilon. Now that was easy. Uh-oh, that detonator has apparently set off a chain reaction of earthquakes. You'd better get off this rock ASAP. You know, I just love how insistent Sierra is on setting up puzzles where the solution is to simply wait for somebody to walk away. That's how it was in King's Quest V with Mordak. You're just supposed to wait. I mean, it kind of made some sense-ish here because I was already doodling around and uh, just sort of happened, but my, my, things have certainly changed since you were here last. That unstable rock has fallen into the simmering lava below. Well, jump with pole. Not now. Can I just jump? Not now. Can I pole vault? No, I cannot. Can I use pole to jump? Ah, what do you mean not now? Well, maybe I have to do it up here. I know I have to do this. Don't tell me I can't. Your brow furrows in grim determination as you prepare for a tremendous leap. The Romanian judge gives you a 9.5, a truly outstanding jump by one of the finest young athletes we've seen this season. You'd like to try that again, but your pole seems to have fallen into the tumultuous lava below.
So I had the solution. It was just a matter of finding the right place to solve the puzzle. Let's get out of here before this place collapses. Sit. Look at screen. Engines engage. Take off. Okay. We are now in relative safety. Let's check out this nav system. There we go. The moon, not the planet, the moon Pestilon. Habitants unknown, surface uncharted, it figures. Set a course. Engage. I love how I just went to light speed to get to the moon. Well... With a mighty whump, you set the aluminum mallard down on the surface of Pestilon. Save as Pestilon. And press the button. And look around. What a peaceful planet for a software company, you think to yourself. What a shame it had to be scumsoft. You are surrounded by what can only be described as tree-like growths towering high above you. The turf has a mossy texture. Really? Look at the grass. No, 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 no. Can I look at the sky? The vibrant colors of the Pestilonian sky remind you of your home planet of Xenon. Suddenly, you feel quite homesick. You make your way through the forest of strange trees in this clearing, where you discover the entrance to some large underground complex. This must be Scumsoft. Suddenly, the door to the complex begins to open. Several guards file out of the entrance and disperse into the woods. They must have been alerted to your presence when you landed. Two guards remain behind to watch the entrance. They are heavily armed, and they do not look friendly. Where to, buddy? To the ship or to Scumsoft? Let's go back to our ship. Okay, it seems that any direction that I go is going to lead me back here. So, let's put on that belt. And then turn on the belt. Wow, this thing really works! You then quickly realize that you only have a few moments before the belt's power pack is depleted. What's happening? It looks like you've made it just in time as your invisibility belt is now completely out of power. Okay. Scum soft. Let's look at this button. The button on the wall by the elevator. I press the button. No, 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 no. There you go. Security, we have an intruder in accounting. Well, I've been jello molded. I should probably try looking at these doors before I just wander on in, huh? wonder if it would help. A door leads out of the hallway. It does not help. Okay, trial and error it is. <laughs> and occasionally missing the door. 
Okay, this door is harder to get into than it looks. There we go. You find yourself in, guess, a janitor's closet. You certainly have a sixth sense about this kind of thing. Can I look around? Look in closet. Rummaging about the cramped closet, you find a pair of old, grimy janitorial coveralls. What a great idea, Roger. No one would be suspicious of a janitor walking around. You grab the coveralls and pull them on, seizing the opportune moment to dump all of the old items you've been pocketing along the way. What a great disguise. Wait, what's this? You reach down into the pocket of the grimy coveralls and find... Well, what do you know? Mr. Garbage. A trash vaporizer. You've seen these babies in all the janitorial supply catalogs, but your superiors were always too cheap to outfit you with one. Anything else? No, a lot of used junk, but nothing of value. So now I have my coveralls and my vaporizer. Man, I don't get to keep my Astro Chicken hat. Scum Soft Janitor. The door has a keycard security system as well as a composite facial scanner. It will be pretty tricky gaining access. Okay, and that's the elevator. Mm-hmm. Read notes. Uh, okay, let's just look around. You are in the cost-efficient corporate accounting department of Scumsoft Incorporated. These hard-working accountants are trying to figure out where the company spends its money. Look at letter. Look at paper. Look but don't touch. Talk to men. Everyone here looks related. It's like a secret society of nerds. Security, we have an intruder in accounting disguised as a janitor. So, yeah, you actually have to vaporize all of the trash as you walk past, or else somebody's going to catch on to you. Oops, <laughs> you missed. There we go. Look at the man. Uh, looks related. Okay. I probably don't need to deal with any of these folks. I missed. William, tell you are not. Stand closer, it's shorter than you think. There we go. Can I open this cabinet? The cabinet is locked. Regardless, you wouldn't find anything useful. What? I am not an intruder. I vaporized your trash, buddy. You know, I have to hand it to them. At least their maze is something cute.
All right. You are in the boss's cubicle area, and the boss is in. Be reverent. Over the top of the partitions, you can see two gentlemen cracking whips. You assume that it must be the programming department. Talk to man. Just do your job and scram, he bellows in response. Behind the desk sits a boy who looks to be about 14 years old. Do your job and get out, he blurbs. Alright, well, job done. You stand on a platform overlooking the scum-soft vehicle bay. In the center of the hangar sits your ship surrounded by rows of short-range skull fighters. Now how will you ever get out of here? Hmm, the boss is gone. You are in the boss's cubicle area and the boss is out. Be yourself. I wonder if I should close this door. Nope, I guess not. Look at desk. All the desk drawers are locked. However, someone has carelessly left a key card on the desk. You're not near one. Yes, I am. You take the key card. I wonder if I can, can I sit at his desk? I guess not. Okay. So, we now have a key card for that door out in the hall. I wonder if I can listen to these men. No. Okay. Not important. And just one more time for fun. <laughs> or twice for fun. You know, whatever. You hear several clicks. I'm in, you think to yourself. Then you hear a synthesized voice say, Keycard verified. Stand by for a composite facial scan. Hmm. Composite facial scan complete. Access denied. Well, it seems there's something that I missed. And I think I know what it is. I noticed this on my way through. Mm-hmm. Sure enough. Look at picture. The boss, Elmo Pug. Take photo. Surreptitiously, you snatch the picture of Elmo. Let's save our game. I don't remember if I have to copy this picture. Copy picture. First making sure that no one is watching, you slip Elmo's picture into the copier and press the start button. Out pops a beautifully reproduced copy, which you roll up and stash in your pocket. Don't forget the original. Hang picture. Wisely, you replace the original picture of Elmo. I can only assume that would have gotten me in some trouble. Now... Use keycard. Stand by for composite facial scan. Hold up picture.
All right. Now, for real, I'm in. You cautiously enter a darkened chamber. A seemingly bottomless shaft drops off into a black abyss. On a platform in the center of the chamber, the two guys from Andromeda wiggle helplessly in lime jello. The platform can only be reached by the four retractable bridges at each entrance. Of course, the two guys from Andromeda being Scott Murphy and Mark Crow, the two primary developers of Space Quest. Uh, this is a very self-referential section. If it wasn't obvious by the large, burly men whipping the programmers as they walked past, I, I feel like this is some uh, this is some commentary on the state of things at Sierra Online around uh, what was this, 1989? I don't know that for sure, though. I'd have to look it up and see, but. Given their sense of humor, I have to imagine this is very, very, very self-referential. I mean, obviously, the friggin' two guys from Andromeda are in the game. Um, and it'll only get better from there. Uh, okay, anyway, let's see what we can do here for the two guys. Look at Bridge. The only visible means of access to the detention platform is by means of retractable bridges. Is there a button? Look at button. An array of control buttons adjoins each door. Press button. Talk to guys. Help! They slurp from their jello encased captivity. Use vaporizer. You successfully free the two guys from their slimy confines, and they begin to speak. Thanks, dude. It's great to be out of that green stuff. Hey, what's your name? Roger Wilco, you admit. They discovered our distress best we could into the Astro Chicken game and sent us here as punishment. Let's get out of here before we're discovered. Hmm. Can I look at the guys? No. So, what's your plan for getting us out of here, Wilco? Nobody's going anywhere. <laughs> you must have thought you were pretty clever, Mr. Wilco, disguising yourself as a janitor. Unfortunately for you, my boys found your sorry excuse for a ship in the woods. Escort this gentleman to the arena. You boys haven't seen a good fight in quite a while. And do away with those two Andromedans. They have been more trouble than they're worth. Take them away. You and the two guys are separated and escorted away. A door opens and you are led into the dark unknown. Okay, Wilco, the name of the game is Nukem Dukem Robots. The only rule is that there are no rules. Use arrow keys to control your robot, use the J key to punch, use the M key to block, press any key to start. How about, I can't save my game. Space Quest 3, this is saving often. I need to save my game. What do you mean I can't save my game? <sighs> All right, arrow keys to control, J key to punch, M key to block. You have a limited power supply. A successful blow will absorb my robot's energy and vice versa. On the other hand, a wasted movement of any kind will rapidly deplete your robot's power. Sounds like fun, huh? Okay, now I can save. Nukem. Dukem. Robots.
oddly more satisfying than the combat in some Quest for Glory games. Well, it looks like you've depleted your power. The last thing you see is your blood slowly spreading across the arena floor. Better hang out at the gym more often. Okay, this time we got him. Let's get out of here. Get them, you fools! And we're off. Well, Roger, you done good. You managed to rescue the two guys and escape from Pestilon alive. Looks like this will be a milk run from here on out. Hmm. I don't believe you. Gosh, Rog, we really appreciate you saving us and all. You're welcome. Yeah, we were really scared. We didn't know what Pug was going to do to us. Hey, uh, don't you think we better get out of here? Pug's really sore and he probably sent some ships after us. Yeah, that's a good point. Let's look at the screen. Warning, short-range fighters approaching from rear. Weapons lock-on detected. Well. Those jokers back on Pestilon must have tampered with the light speed thingamajig. Indeed, my light speed is non-functional. All right, weapon systems. So the shield's in the back. And, uh, well. Attack speed it is. Having the correct shield up could have prevented this. The final shot shreds the side of your ship. In the sudden vacuum, your body fluids expand beyond the capacity of your tissues. Your desiccated body will drift forever, a grim testament to your blundering stupidity. Okay, in my defense, I thought they were chasing me and coming from behind. Apparently, that is not the case. Well, let's move at attack speed and check out these weapon systems. When the enemy ship comes from behind, you will automatically begin tracking. Use the direction keys or mouse to move the target crosshairs onto the target. When you are locked on, use the spacebar to fire. I wonder if this will be easier with the mouse. No, I think I have to click the arrows, which would not make it easier. Well, I'm assuming they're coming. Ah, short-range fighters approaching from rear. Weapon lock-on detected. Okay. That's what I missed last time. Target in rear. Oh, 
Target in front. Target negative. In rear. Oh, there we go. All I have to do is get the crosshairs on him. A thrilling space battle. You know, you take your eyes off the screen for three seconds. The remaining enemy ships have given up and are heading back to the planet. It looks like you were just too much for them. Man, oh man, you really showed those bozos a thing or two. Now, can we get something to eat? You inform the two guys that light speed is no longer functional. They're not overly pleased by this piece of news. What? Now I'll never get any food. Some rescuer you are. Hey, what's this thing on the wall? It says, Light Speed Maintenance Access Panel. Gee, maybe I can fix this bucket of plastibolts. Yeah, this is it. The fan belt thing came off of the round thing it was on. Just a second. Okay, she's all fixed. Let's go grab a burger. Too late, you realize that you have no course laid in. The light engines kick in before you can override. You inform the two guys that light speed is now functional, but it's out of control. They're not overly pleased with this bit of news either. Ah, we're gonna die! Oh no, why did I get up this morning? Mummy! Careening blindly through space, your ship speeds toward a sizable black hole. Once within the gravitation of the black hole, there's no escape. You plunge into destiny. The overwhelming force of the black hole draws your ship in. Helpless to do anything, you and your passengers strap in and hope for the best. You enter a blackness like no other you have ever experienced. All sense of time and speed are lost. Suddenly, a bright light becomes visible in the distance. It grows larger as your ship races toward it. Finally, you are hurled out of the blackness into a parallel universe. Cut the engines to sub-light speed as you near a seemingly habitable planet. Greetings, Earthling. We are the two guys from Andromeda, universally famous software authors. And I am Roger Wilco, space age swashbuckler and all around nice guy. Hello, I'm Ken Williams, president and founder of Sierra Online. So, you two guys are software authors, huh? What are your credits? Never heard of Astro Chicken? No. Good. How about you two guys coming to work for me? <laughs> 
Sounds great. How many Buckazoids does it pay? Buckazoids? Say, uh, Mr. Williams, do you need a janitor? No. As our space saga comes to a close, Roger, feeling a little left out, struts off to his ship with the satisfaction of knowing his mission has been accomplished. The two guys from Andromeda go on to create the Space Quest series of adventure games, reaping fame and fortune. They grow fat on their success and soon become burnt out and begin a drunken tailspin into obscurity. And so we bid our hero a fond farewell as his ship once again bursts into light speed, course unknown. The end. Thanks to the following for their cooperation in the making of this game, the Pestilon Department of Forestry. Monolith Synthetic Industries Incorporated. Festers World of Wonders. Gypazoid Novelties. Fleabutt Sand Advisory Council. Arnoid Droid Works. Caffeinate 90. Orbo Snack Food Inhalers. Friends of the Talking Bear Society. Mark Sieberts, Bob Siebenberg, and Stuart Goldstein for their outstanding sound work. Doug Oldfield, Ken Koch, and Chris Smith for a great programming effort. Robert E. Bobbitt Heitman for his generous yet verbose cont contribution of advice, help, and emergency code service. Very special thanks to the two babes from Andromeda, our wives, for putting up with us these last 12 months. You for shelling out your hard-earned bucks to buy this game. And thanks to all of you for watching. That concludes Space Quest 3, The Pirates of Pestilon. We will resume our journey through the Space Quest saga with Space Quest 4, Roger Wilco and the Time Rippers, which is my personal favorite game. I am so, so, so very excited to get to this one. Um, it commits many of the cardinal sins of Sierra game design, but it is at least absolutely hilarious while doing it. Um, and we'll get the introduction of Gary Owens as narrator, which means that I won't have to read all of this stuff and give you my cheap Gary Owens impression. Uh, so look forward to that. I certainly am. And thank you as always for watching and for sticking around with me. I hope you are enjoying the, the journey through these games. I, again, I know that I certainly am. This is just an absolute pleasure for me. So thank you for joining me here on Saving Often, and I hope that you will come back next time for Space Quest 4. Until then, save early, save often, and please take care of yourselves. <laughs>